non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. You held him to 20 points, man. You gave us a chance at the end. But I got three words for you. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, training camp is less than three weeks away. You like that? You like Hell that? Hell yes. Are you kidding? We get to Daily see coverage sun, out there. Sun-drenched Judd Zolgad. No. Sweat on his brow, oh, taking God. notes at practices. Me and KOC, me and Quazy, me and my, my buddy Kirk, tight now. I'm curious to see what Qua- what Quazy's going to do at training camp, because Rick Spielman would always have his same little outfit, his little white tennis shoes with his notepad, short little, notepad. little shorts, notepad tucked into the back of his shorts. stand behind the drills on the field, constantly taking notes. Lurking. Watching. It's making eye contact with players that he was going to cut later mm-hmm. on. It will be interesting. Weeks. I bet Quazy has a very different philosophy on how to handle football practice. Yeah. Uh, so, boys, we're going to get back to starting today the State of the Vikings offense episodes on Thursdays because now it's like, all right, now the offseason's almost over and we're going to actually have some things to sink our teeth into here. And uh, in preparation for today's State of the Vikings offense episode, which focuses on third down offense, I am going to present to you some mind-blowing stats and trends that I wasn't. I knew that they had some struggles, but there are some things in here that are going to rock your world as a Vikings fan and observer. Okay, mm. things mm. that they need to get a handle on if they want to be as successful as they hope to be. But the show is presented by our friends at Surly Brewing Company and TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution, all at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. So, I present to you guys today three key offensive stats surrounding one of the Vikings' biggest problems and things holding them back from being an above 500 or playoff team, and that is third down offense, okay? Um, we've had some conversations about this before and, you know, Kirk Cousins isn't, he isn't always as great when the opposing team knows that he has to pass, for instance, it just becomes a little harder. He's not as mobile. He can't escape pressure, et cetera. But let's start with key stat number one here. And this is mind blowing. The Vikings had the longest average yards to go on third down of any offense in the NFL. The Vikings' average third down was a third and nearly eight last season. Yep. At the top of the list, so the teams that had the shortest distance, the Bucks, the Rams, and the Eagles were all third and six on average. So nearly a two-yard gap. It might not sound like a lot, but when you start to stack that up over 16, 17 games or whatever, the Vikings' average third down was third and eight. The best teams in the NFL on you know in terms of getting to a, an advantageous third down situation We're third and six. There's a lot more where this came from, but let me pause right there. It kind of felt like the Vikings were in a lot of third and longs, but I had not done this dive. They were the biggest third and long offense in the NFL in terms of like the volume of third and longs. I'm not surprised one bit. Their second down philosophy completely set them up for third down failure consistently. Like, no, I'm a little bit surprised that the top teams weren't more like third and four, third and five. Uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised that it's so close. The third and six and the third and eight are so close. I would have thought like the top team would be third and four, third and five. But Well, but it's an average, though. So that would right. mean that, you know, they're right. always in third and one, which is unrealistic, too. But in this case, I am not surprised one bit. And this is why, look, I mean, what we watched last year now i would go back you know what stefanski i thought and gary kubiak did a good job uh going back to Shermer, i thought he did a magnificent job but if you watch this team weekly and didn't look at one damn metric or stat like you just watched games this offense was a colossal in my opinion so eliminate all stats eliminate anything we know colossal failure um when you look at the skill position players when you look at the fact that the right tackle was good, when you look at the fact that the left tackle, when Derrissaw started to play, certainly is not a train wreck. You know, Bradbury, there, there's problems there. But 
when you just watched this team and understood that when the plays were scripted, they operated at an efficiency that probably rivaled a lot of really good teams, possibly one of the best in the league. I'd be curious mm-hmm. to see if, if, they, if they could track scripted plays. I think the Vikings were fantastic. But after that, they, they didn't struggle. They fell off the cliff. And so this stat actually only emboldens more what we thought we saw, which was, and this is on Clint Kubiak, but it's also on Mike as well. The conservative nature of how they approached second down set you up for third down doom. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, my my first thought here was, okay, wow, this kind of confirms what our eyes told us, which is, yeah, they're just in third and long all the time. Why are they in third and long all the time? Here are the three reasons why they were in third and long all the time. We're still within key stat category number one here. These are sub stats within key Mm -hmm. stat category number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Penalties. The Vikings racked up the second most offensive holding calls of any team in the NFL last year. In fact, get this. This is bonkers. Okay. The Vikings had 42 combined holding and false start penalties last year. The Rams had 18. Fewest wow. in the NFL. Wow. I'll repeat that. The Vikings had 42 combined holding and false start penalties last year. The Rams had 18. Fewest in the NFL. The Vikings were like I think fifth or sixth most in there when you add those two up. Interesting. It feels like a lot of those, um, just off the top of my head, also came in the red zone. It feels like they backed themselves up like they'd get to, to the to the 10, and now they'd be at the 15 or the 20. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but it, it feels like both of, those, both of those penalty types were way too frequent in, in a place where you're in good field position, but it's already difficult to score. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, the the Rams had, I think it was nine offensive holding penalties all season and nine false starts. So they were just when it comes to pre snap, yeah. everyone's buttoned up. We don't false start. The Vikings weren't terrible with false starts. They had 16 false starts last year, which was like, you know, top 10 in the league in terms of fewest. But for the Rams to come in there and the Rams did not have any pro bowl or all pro caliber offensive linemen. But they just they they didn't get called for holding nearly as often as the Vikings. Oli Udo, I think, was the the biggest uh, culprit within this Holy category. Oli Udo, I believe, as uh, Paul Fritz Holy, Skoll. Holy Udo and Holy Oli Udo. Holy Udo. Yeah. Holy Udo, right? Holy Udo. So that's a lot. A, that's a, that, a 42 combined holding and false start penalties to 18 is a lot. Okay. Yeah, terrible. Second down. You brought up second down. I'm gonna. This is this is getting into the weeds here. So uh, bear with me here. Get those nerds. Now is this stat two? No, we're still within the first stat category here. This is okay. all sort of under the. Gotcha. Why are they in third and long all the time? Mm-hmm. Trying to answer that question. So number one reason is penalties. The number two reason is second down success rate. So mm-hmm. success rate is defined by Football Outsiders and some of the other analytical websites that front offices use. For it to be a successful second down play, you need to get 60% of the yards to go. So if it's second and 10 and you get six yards, making it a third and four, that's that's considered a successful statistical play. If it's second down and 20, you got to get, what's my math? Uh, I guess you got to get 12 yards. You got to get, you got to get, make it a a third and eight, a third and manageable. So if you get 60% of the yards on second down, it is a successful play. The Vikings ranked 27th in second down success rate last year. When they ran the ball on second down, they were 29th in success rate running the football compared to other teams that ran the football uh, on in those same situations. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Wow! And again, yeah, we saw it. Now here, here's my question: um, Do you have or can you find what teams ran the ball the most? on second down because it feels like the vikings and and the problem is again it could be second 20 their reliance on the run on second down predicated or set up the third down failure um but yeah like all of these stats to me are sort of what we saw why it drove you so crazy why you thought at some point they might change things 
and yet they continually had the philosophy of second down, let's give the ball to Dalvin. We got to get some yards. We got to mash away some yards. It's like, you really think you're going to get enough yards to, to then be in a favorable third down? Yeah. There's no bleeping way. That was the initial instinct, and the and the numbers bear it out, that if they have a holding call, like they're, now yes. they're in second and 20 or something, the instinct was, well, we gotta, we gotta, we're going backwards, so let's just lean forward with a run, and it's maybe it's four yards or something. Well, that's not helping you. Now you're in third and sixteen, right? Or maybe you run for eight yards. That's not really helping you either. It's third and twelve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, or if it, like you said, if it's uh, you know second and eleven or second and ten because your first play went nowhere, we got to run the ball again so we can make it third and seven or third and six. No, how about you throw the ball and get a first down? Right. Or throw the ball and get nine yards, and now it's third and one, and now your whole playbook's open again. Exactly. Infuriating. So, uh, and that, again, it's kind of an eye test thing. It just it kind of felt like, boy, the Vikings are running the ball a lot in second and long. Or they're just right. not, they're not moving the ball in either regard on second and down as much as they should. And who was going, who was going to tell Mike no at that point? Clint wasn't going to say no, that. No, dude. No. But the third one here, in terms of reasons why the Vikings are in third and long, third and nearly eight on average, more than any team in the NFL, Kirk Cousins' conservative nature on first and second down. So he ranks 31st among 45 quarterbacks that threw at least 100 passes. He ranks 31st in average depth of throw on first and second down. Now it's funny because he's actually above like Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes, so I you know I think I don't know if those quarterbacks are also conservative on first and second down, or if schematically Patrick Mahomes is finding Tyreek Hill, you know, five yards through the air or something. We'd have to do a deeper dive there, but um, but but again, Cousins is 31st in average depth of throw on first and second down. Then he goes on third down from 31st to seventh. Okay, it's third down. Now it's time to go here. We need you. Yes. And he actually and he does throw the ball down the field. Right. But by then it's kind of too late. And I'm not putting all this on Kirk. Obviously, penalties, second down play calling and ineffectiveness. Yes. And then also Kirk not forcing the issue as much and being as aggressive on first and second down all contribute to the Vikings averaging a third and nearly eight last season. And that's what the play calling has to fix. Like you've got to give that that's why I'm really curious now to see Kirk um put into i would hope situations to succeed and he's gonna have to turn the ball loose too yeah but that but that's the thing phil like everything you just gave us statistically to me points out to how easy it must have been to game plan for the vikings like you never how, how many times did you give yourself a chance throughout the course of of a game to use your term open up the playbook yeah no, it's it's true. Everything leaned to second and short. Oh, uh, whole playbook's open. Now let's just get the first down. Right. Second and long. Oh, well, we don't want to make a mistake here, so let's just lean into the line of scrimmage. And it's then just, third and long, you got to throw, so you're screwed. Yeah. And the defense knows Kirk. Kirk is not as effective when the defense knows he has to pass. And when it's third down and eight, on average, guess what? Like you're just going to get more guys. And then your offensive line's put in a bad spot because now the defense is pinning its ears back, so to speak. So all of that is under the umbrella of key stat category number one, which, again, to me, these things are mind-blowing. They yeah. validate what we saw with our eyes, but the Vikings are shooting themselves in the foot by being in third and long as often as they were. And that funnels into key stat number two. As a result, as a result of all those things and that lead-up, the Vikings offense ranked 26th in third-down conversion rate. They converted on 36% of their third downs. Kansas City and Buffalo were at the top of the league, 50%. So they're, I think Kansas City was like 53% third down conversions. Part of that's because they were setting themselves up with more advantageous down and distance. The other part is they got a quarterback that's the ultimate bail you out guy. Oh, we're down by 20 in the first half? Okay, cool. I'm just going to you know, be a video game joystick. Right. Uh, the Rams and the Chargers were next in line at 45% offensive uh, third down conversion rate. So... Again, some of this is not setting yourself up for success on third down. Some of it's that, you know, if you're putting Kirk in a spot where the defense knows he has to throw, it's not his strong suit. But the Vikings were one of the five or six worst teams at just converting third downs into first downs. Yes. And again, I would love to go back and do a thorough r review of all the scripted plays because mm -hmm. I bet you'd find out that on those plays, the Vikings were incredibly successful in almost every situation. 
Think about how many times they went down the field and got some points. You know? And then it just completely changed. It's like, oh my God, the scripted plays are done. What are we going to do? Yeah. So, yeah, this is this is why I am so eager to now see this offense run by a guy calling it who knows what he's doing. Yep. Uh, and, and there's more here to be discussed, but just for fun, the Vikings also had the longest average yards to go on second down. So they averaged second and eight last season. The Packers averaged second and 6.9. So that's kind of the gap. Again, it's would, not you're, you're not looking at super wide gaps here, but the Vikings had the longest distance to go on second down last year. I'd love to compare some of the stats that you're giving us right now to 2020 or 19 as well, just to know what the difference is. Because, I mean, I really do think it might not have been perfect previously, but it really felt like it fell apart last season. Yeah. Yeah, well, I could, I could, I could think I can get almost any of these things if you, okay. you know, if there's things you want me to uh, to dig up for you at some point here. But it is, it is fascinating. And then I'll throw this last one out here: State of the Vikings offense, third down struggles, key stat category number three, Kirk Cousins himself on third down, so on throwing plays, compared to other quarterbacks, was 21st in third down EPA, which is expected points added. It's a front. It's a stat that front offices use. It's very football analytic-y. Uh, Crazy but it, football. Yeah, he does. And so on third down passing plays, he was 21st in third down EPA behind Daniel Jones and Trevor Simeon. The top five quarterbacks really? in this category were Pat Mahomes, Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, and Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. So essentially, how how much are you increasing your team's chances to score points on third down passes? Mm-hmm. And for the most part, it's how often are you converting first downs on third down? So we're, so, we're yeah. this is going to get really intriguing, and it's probably worth an entire episode at some point, too, is, look, like, Kirk definitely didn't have the best play calling around him, and I get that. Uh, but where this is going to get super interesting is the fact that Kirk is now going to be empowered more by o- O'Connell. And when there's 15 seconds left, the communication device is going to shut off. And it's going to be up to Kirk to look at the pre-snap read and make the play off of that. So, like, that's where this is going to get. Because, like, O'Connell's not – I don't think he's going to dictate things. I think he's going to give Kirk options. So, like, to your point, second and eight. Okay, you got options. What do you pick? Hot shot. You know, hot shot. Keanu Reeves. What, what do you pick, Johnny Utah? So, yeah. that's that's where I'm – that's where I think it's going to be really fun because now we can get a much better – better read about Kirk's instinctual ability without there being a ton of questions about who's doing what. Yeah, I think so. If if I'm Kevin O'Connell and I'm Quasey and all the assistant coaches, and, and and by the way, they are not oblivious to these things. I'm I'm sure these are top of the list things that they have to sort out and, and fix in the last six months here going into training camp. But my checklist of important things to make happen starts with penalties. You can't rack up 42 combined false start penalties and holding calls when yeah. the team that won the Super Bowl racked up 18. Yes. 18 seems incredible. The, so the Rams were basically averaging one false start and holding combined per game. <laughs> and that is well, as clean as you can get offensively. False starts are really bad. Like a, a false start, like I get it's going to take place at times, but false starts are, are in my opinion, avoidable a lot holds are sort of weird because you can't really it's the referee's discretion right and like i'm I'm sure i'm sure the rams had several holds that weren't called but false starts are discipline you know the it's funny the teams that there's three teams that were tied with 26 false starts last year at the top of the list and all three of them are either young quarterbacks or quarterbacks that you would look at as kind of spacey or not great leaders arizona cardinals Kyler Murray is incredibly talented, but the knock on him is he's kind of immature. He's not much of a field general and a leader. He's kind of a quiet guy. Sure. So if he's kind of a quiet guy and not much of a field general, guess what? There's probably going to be some communication issues with the offensive line. The Lions with Jared Goff. It's kind of a... Say no more. Again, not just a a guy that just kind of spaces out and does dumb things. And then the Jaguars with the Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence missed connection. Trevor Lawrence, I think, is going to be 
awesome still, but that's a rookie quarterback swimming in over his head with a with an incompetent head coach, right? Yeah. So those three teams being at the top of that list. And then you look at the bottom, okay, the teams that committed the fewest false star penalties, the Green Bay Packers and the Los Angeles Rams. Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford. Mm-hmm. Now the Jets also show up on this list, which is interesting, as the, having the third fewest false starts, so credit to them. But then you get to Joe Burrow and the Bengals, Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, and Ryan Tannehill, veteran quarterback, and the Titans. So the teams that take the fewest false starts, by the way, uh, the Buccaneers are also right there, uh, tied with the Titans. And the Vikings, too. But the Vikings did not have that many false star penalties last year. But yeah. when you have a quarterback that is, you know, at least a veteran who understands communication and cadence and all those things, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, or Joe Burrow, who's just a winner at every single level, Russell Wilson, then there's not going to be as many offensive linemen wondering, whoa, what, what happened? Well, What was the snap count? And I, I think the simple transition to a right guard who can play right guard is probably pretty important. Yeah. I think that will help. Yeah, a veteran who doesn't just get nervous and stuff. One of the stupidest things this franchise ever did, and they've done a lot of stupid things. So so my checklist would be, guys, we got to cut that down from 42 yeah. penalties to, I don't know, 25? Like, can we can we cut one a game and and see where that takes us? And then I think second down, you, first down and second down. What are you doing to put yourself in a better position for third and manageable, third and five, third and six, third and four, right? Why are you running the ball so often on second down? Be more aggressive on first and don't treat don't treat it as if like, well, we have third down if we need it. No, go get first downs on first and second down. Chunk the ball forward on those downs. Yeah, that's not gonna be a problem now. That that's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Um I also would be curious to know if there's any tie between um release time of the quarterback and holds as well. You know, because Kirk sure, does sure. cause Kirk sacks. Like it's not always on his line. He actually cut that. I think he cut the self yeah. sacks, the, the self credit sacks down last year. I think he did too. But but the point is, I'm sure the release time is at least partially tied to that stat. Yeah. So well, there you have it. That's a, I don't know. That's a great deep dive. How much more deep we can dive into third down statistics right there? I don't I feel like it's sure. Football statistical cocaine is what we just did. Do you think, so just did a 20-minute statistical deep dive into the Vikings' third down problems. Did people fall asleep there? Do you think that was, because I find this stuff fascinating, and I'd love to know why. Why is this not working? Come to comment. Yeah, did you, get, if you, if you fell comment. asleep and just woke up here at the 23-minute mark of the episode, let us know in the YouTube <laughs> comment section. And click subscribe, please. <laughs> it's no mistake that among, I'm sure there's a multitude of, of reasons why Kevin O'Connell got hired by the Vikings, there is no question that that stat that, that you just gave us about holds and false starts was at least broached. Absolutely. Like, I mean, that is a that is a thing where you say, hold on a second, you, you guys had 18 and we had, what, 40, 42? Um, that is definitely tied in. Yep. How did that happen? And, and how can we prevent uh, that from happening again on our end? Okay, uh, what are people saying about the Minnesota Vikings, presented by our friends here at Brainerd International Raceway. Vroom, vroom, Declan. For the uh, second year in a row, Moto America is coming to vroom. Brainerd International Raceway. Vroom, vroom. Five classes, vroom, vroom. 120 riders, 90 total super bike races, vroom, vroom. Uh, join Brainerd International Raceway and Motor America uh, for three days of heart-pumping entertainment the whole family. Uh, visit birmn.com. It's July 28th through the 31st. Can feel that heart jumping. And kids 12 and under, get in free. So start planning your summer now. Birmn.com. Brainerd International Raceway. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe uh, go up there during the summer of Surly. I don't know. I don't know if they have Surly up there, but you know you can always Hell yeah. find Are some somewhere somewhere in Brainerd. You can find we, Surly. Yep. Absolutely. And and in fact, I got an idea. Here's here's what you should do. Stock up on Surly at your your local liquor store, Summer of Surly, so you get the Supremes, you get the Logic Bombs, and then you put them in your trunk in an ice uh, cooler, of course, because you're a responsible person like Judd is. You drive up to the cabin or the place that, that you stay at BIR, and then you break out the Summer of Surly because you know what? 
Football might be starting soon, but summer's got a lot of runway left, and the summer of Surly needs to be incorporated into your good times. And of course, as you're enjoying those good times, show us your cans on Twitter at Jay Zolgad at Score North. We always appreciate that you you do. In fact, I got a photo a couple days back, uh, gents, of a guy with a logic bomb at the White Sox Twins game in Chicago. There you go. So how about that? So even the White Sox get it because they've got Surly. Love it. Love it. All right. What are people saying about the Vikings here? Declan found this from NFL.com yesterday. This is this isn't specific to the Vikings, but it's just kind of interesting where some of these guys go and what the Vikings do. So NFL.com did a redraft of the entire league. Yep. A seven round redraft of the entire league based on players that you would pick if you're if you're tasked with winning right now. So you're not, it's not like a three-year window. It's winning right now in 2022. If the entire league became free agents and there was a snake draft with all 32 teams, where would Kirk Cousins go? Mm-hmm. Who would the Vikings mm-hmm. pick at, let's see, the, uh, it's well, based on first round order from this last year's draft. And then they do it like a fantasy style snake draft. So team 32 would pick twice in a row. I know, Declan, you've seen this. Judd, have you seen this actual list yet or no? I went through it. I went through it last night. Okay. Fine tooth comb, all seven rounds. Very intrigued. (laughs) I'm sure you did. Well, Aaron Rodgers is number one to the Jaguars, which right away I was like, really? Yeah. Okay, so who would you guys take number one if you were tasked with winning right now? Would it be Rodgers? No, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah. With the style of game he plays in 2022, not even, it's, I, I shouldn't say it's not close. I would definitely take him before I took Rodgers or Brady. Mahomes. So the Jaguars take Rodgers, and then the Lions take Brady, and then Patrick Mahomes falls to the Texans at three. Yeah, I didn't like interesting. that. There were several things I didn't like. I disagreed vehemently with some of this. Josh Allen to the Jets at four. Joe Burrow to the Giants at five. As you can imagine, a lot of quarterbacks coming off the board early here. Yeah. Russell Wilson to the Bears. I'm sorry, Ju- Justin Herbert to the Panthers at six. Russell Wilson to the Bears at seven. Lamar Jackson to the Falcons at eight. Dak Prescott to the Broncos at nine. So now we have nine quarterbacks off the board. Aaron Donald, the first defensive player. Of course, the Seahawks go defense at 10, right? Yeah. With Kyler Murray still on the board, going now 11 to Washington. So, uh, so that makes 10 quarterbacks off the board in the first 11 picks. And the Vikings taking... This could be a perfect chance to take Kirk Cousins, right? If right. he's a fringe top 10 quarterback. Absolutely. Instead, they take Derek Carr. Mm. And then I the guess. Browns take Matthew Stafford at yep. 13. So uh, what is that who you, if the board fell out this way, who would you take if you're the Vikings at 12? Um, I, I would personally take Stafford now. Because this entire draft that he conducted is based on expectation for 2000. 22 alone i would take stafford because you just hired the guy that worked with him he just won a super bowl and while i might like Derek carr more than kirk and i think he is i think he's a better locker room guy and i think guys like him more there's still some things he does that concern me i think if i was building a one-year 2022 team kevin o'connell as my coach and this draft dropped the exact same way Personally, I think I take Stafford. Hmm. What about you, Dex? Uh, with the way the quarterback board has shaked out at this point, so, I mean, yeah, the Vikings took Carr, Stafford went, went afterwards. I know you can make the case for Carr, but now we're in the territory of quarterback tiers where they're very interchangeable. They're not game-changing quarterbacks. They're managing quarterbacks. So, actually, I wouldn't take a quarterback here. Um, I can probably get another one back in the second round. I would take a Devontae Adams. I'd take a Tyreek Hill. I would, hell, I would take a Miles Garrett. Because at this point, you're now you're out of tier one and two quarterbacks. So can I get yeah. the third or fourth tier quarterback in the second round? And I'm I'm looking at this too as a from a fantasy football kind of standpoint because it's a snake draft. Yeah. So I would I would avoid a quarterback here. I would take something else. So I actually I would take Stafford because I, I actually think Stafford is he has graduated to a higher tier. So mm-hmm. Stafford would. I, but to Declan's logic, if it was yep. a fantasy draft, which this kind of is. When you see a run on quarterbacks go, you know, 11 quarterbacks deep, well, then why don't you just grab the first wide receiver? Why wouldn't you take Devonta Adams? Yep. And then maybe you can come back and get, like, Matt Ryan in the second round or something. I didn't like this right. draft. I won't pull any punches. I objected to this draft. I had several things. I went through this last night with uh, perhaps a couple surlies. But 
I went through this and there was, I'm going to tell you right now, I have a major bone to pick with uh, Chad, right? Re- Reuter? Yeah. I have yep. a major, major bone to pick with his wide receiver listings. Okay. Do you, I'll, let me, I'll keep going here because the yeah, run on wide receiver like, starts at 14. I like to, to complain the, about this. The Ravens take Devontae Adams. Tyreek yep. Hill goes to the Dolphins, which he already is with the Dolphins. Yes, sir. And then Miles Garrett to the Colts, Jalen Ramsey to the Chargers, Cooper Cup now to the Saints. So we are three wide receivers off the board here. Yep. You see where this is going. Yes. Uh, TJ Watt to the Eagles, Trent Williams, first offensive lineman off the board of the Steelers, Micah Parsons, linebacker to the Patriots, then Jamar Chase to the Raiders. That's four wide receivers off the board. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey to the Cardinals, Nick Bosa to the Cowboys, George Kittle to the Bills. So count those. So six, six pass catchers off the board. Debo, Derrick Henry to the Titans, of course. Debo Samuel to the Buccaneers. That's five wide receivers off the board. Keep going. Cameron Hayward to the Packers. Joey Bosa, Niners. Jalen Waddle to the Chiefs. That is six wide receivers off the board. Jonathan Taylor, Bengals. Chris Jones, Rams. Now we're into the second round. <laughs> Uh, Matt Ryan to the Rams with the first pick in the second round. Kirk Cousins to the Bengals, so he becomes the 14th quarterback off the board. Now we got another run of quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill, Chiefs. Teron Armstead to the Niners. Jimmy Garoppolo, Packers. Mac Jones, Buccaneers. What is happening? This is ridiculous. Trevor Lawrence, Bills. Where's Justin Jefferson? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. This is. I'm going to skip some of these. Me off. 45th to the Steelers. Are you yes. kidding me? Yes. Yeah, it's weird, dude. <laughs> what? what the hell? What is happening? Once again, the Steelers find a value receiver in the second round of a draft. A value receiver, dude. A value Are you receiver. Serious? Can I just can turn I just in your card key? Into context, how stupid that that is. And look, I didn't know this. I, this I'm not a homer. God. Okay. But Justin Jefferson's a special player. And I would hope three years in now, he's going into year three, that people that cover this league realize he's a special player. All right? Justin Jefferson is the seventh receiver off the board in this snake draft. He's He goes at 45. Let me put into context how stupid this is. 108 catches in 2021 and this is all being done for this year so this is not like a long-term thing in which case it would make as much sense also to draft him higher 108 catches was fourth in the league last year 1616 yards was second in the league last year his 10 touchdowns were tied for sixth and then as far as receiving plays of 20 plus yards okay so like is is he a threat deep he had 27 such plays, which was second on this list of players. My point being is, what the hell is this? Dude, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I didn't know. I, I did not. I, I was kind of digesting this on the fly because I, I just want, I wanted to be sort of surprised. I'm shocked by this. I was, in, I was actually upset with this. Did he just forget? Because he's a smart guy. He, he does. Have. He's like one of their lead mock drafters. But just like, how do you get to forty five and you're like, oh shoot, you know what? I I, I mean, totally forgot about Justin Jefferson, yes. but I don't have time to go back and redo it. To bring it back to the fantasy football side, you know, like there are those guys that you get to the second or third round while you're at, you know, pick thirty. You're like, this guy's still on the board. Yeah. I wonder if it just became that. You know, I, I I don't understand the disrespect either. He deserves to be in the first round, uh, in the top twenty, top twenty five, whatever you want to put him at. But I think he just forgot. He forgot you know, he sold through the cracks. I did a fantasy baseball auction one time. I don't know. It's probably like 15 years ago. And I mistakenly thought that Lance Berkman, like prime Lance Berkman, was still out there. And I needed an outfielder. But I, I had the most money of anyone. So I was just kind of sitting there like, oh, no one's throwing him out yet. I'll just keep waiting until the price comes down. I've like budgeted for I've budgeted for Lance Berkman. And then finally it comes around to me. And I had so much more money than everyone else. I was like, well, I'll just pounce on him now. Lance Berkman. For fifty dollars, and everyone's like, "He went off the board an hour and a half ago, guy." Yeah, I've done. That's that. what this. Yeah, this is that. That's the fantasy football thing. Is Justin Jefferson still available? Pfft, no, it's, we're at pick forty-five. <laughs> but he's doing this draft by himself. Just reverse <laughs> Jefferson. Know. Just replace Debo <laughs> Samuel, Jamar Chase. I'm going to tell you right now, if if it's non-quarterback specific, and I'm offered Chase or JJ, and Chase is a great player. Don't get me wrong. I'm taking JJ. Yes, Tyree Killer JJ. Yeah, Tyreek Hill is too. amazing, but watch what happens Adams, to Tyreek Hill in Miami. 
Tyreek Hill's going to find out pretty quick what it's like yeah. to yeah. not play with Patrick Mahomes. 100%. He's still going to be great. Don't get me wrong. 100%. But yeah. I think if you were to ask me right now on this list, I go probably. Stella's pissed off. Stella's yeah, pissed off, pissed. and she should be. And, and her friend is here. He's barking now. Ryder. Right. Ryder's here. Everyone's here. And you know what? Everyone's pissed off. We're all going to drink Surly's post show because we're so mad. But you got Devontae and Cooper Cup. And after that, I think it has to be Jefferson. Are you so pissed that you might binge eat responsibly? No, I'm not. Because you know what? You know what? Here's the thing. Ryder did this draft by himself alone, right? And he didn't have, he clearly didn't have checks and balances. He didn't have a friend. He didn't have support. When it comes to my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers, I've got support now. Who? My wife, Dawn, has joined too. My wife. My wife. And she, and she today informed me, now down 10 pounds. I'm down 40. A combined 50 pounds. We're at different stages, but you know what? We're both on the plan and being supportive and and both uh, cooking together. And so it's a responsible plan. It's a teamwork plan. It's been fantastic. And you can join now. In fact, join with your wife or your wife. girlfriend, significant other, simple start plan, only $59. Call 855-GO-LIVEA, livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com, inside the state or out, because outside you, you can do it virtually. In fact, I was told last week someone from the Seattle area had signed up, and we appreciate that. A nice. fan from Seattle, nice. so Livia, L-I-V-E-A dot com. Do it together, though. The teamwork works perfect. Join with your mistress is the new... Uh... I did not say that. I said <laughs> partner. I said girlfriend. I said wife. Okay. I did it's not a hot say summer. that. You never know. You know, you know. <laughs> Never know. All I'm saying is teamwork and weight loss, Livia.com. Amazing. Uh, all right, Federated 2 here before we get to random Viking of the week. Federated has been helping business owners for over 100 years. They've also been helping with their partners and their network raise $44 million since 2005 for Big Brothers Big Sisters, which provides children facing adversity with strong and enduring one-to-one -one mentorship relationships that can change their lives for the better. We're talking about... Uh, better futures, potentially better schools, stronger communities that come out of these big brothers, big sisters relationships. Find out how you can be a part of it at federatedchallenge.org. That's federatedchallenge.org. All right, boys, it is time for the random Viking of the week here on right. Purple Daily, where I pit you guys against each other, different generations of Vikings knowledge between the two of you. And uh, to this point, Judd has a 27 to 15 lead over Declan since we started doing this. I don't know, late last year at some point. The last handful of random Vikings have been Cedric Griffin, Matt Asiata, Pat Williams, Corey Chavis, Marquise Gray, and Latavius Murray. Yeah. Definitely. Here's how it works. I'm going to throw out a series of clues. You guys can jump in and guess up to three times incorrectly before you are eliminated. And uh, you can ask me questions if you want to. I can refuse to answer because it's my game. I make the rules. I like how you always point that out. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good about it, actually. Whoa. I oh, 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 my. Oh, Easy. Yeah. Oh, 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 Everyone oh, calm what's down. Going on? <laughs> earthquake out there? There is, yes. What's going it's on? An earthquake of my clunky hands here as I try to pull up this this person's... Uh, I just want to pull up a page in case I run out of clues here because I don't know if you guys are going to do well on this or not. We'll see. I have been struggling of late. To hey, you got back on the board. Yeah, no, you've, won two, you've won two in a row here after Declan right, took down four in a row. it took me row. too long to get both of them. Well, let's start with this clue. This random Viking of the Week originally hails from Thompson, Georgia. Bulldog. <laughs> Played college football in the Southeastern Conference, the SEC. Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N or T-O-M-S-O-N? Nope, there's no P. It's Thompson. Okay, that helps. No P, yeah. We're with Thompson, Georgia, no P. No P. There's no P. There's no P. Got it. I just I like to have my uh, uh, towns right. Okay. Got it. Spelled right. All right. This random Viking of the week played 94 career NFL games. Hmm. 42 nice. starts. It's not a bad career. No. Okay. His wife was an Olympic bronze medalist. You want the event? Sure. Track. Track and field, 100-meter hurdles. 
trap shooting. No, I'm just kidding. Trap shooting. <laughs> Synchronized swimming. This random Viking of the week has 14,000 followers on Twitter. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Not as good as Judd. Yeah. Must not have been real popular. This random Viking of the week actually just had uh, recently his son received an offer to play college football at Texas Tech, I saw. This random Viking of the Week actually in college played for the old ball coach. The old Brad ball Johnson. coach. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Okay. Did Brad Johnson play for the old Man. ball coach? Steve Spurrier? Florida, right? Did yeah. he? I, I legitimately have no idea. Oh, he, Brad um, he played at, I thought he played in Florida. He was like a 12th round draft pick. Let's look it up real quick. I thought he played at... His son is already, he's got a son at, uh, or had a son at LSU. He might have transferred. Florida State. Brad Johnson Florida was State. Florida okay. State. All right. Be noted for a, f a future edition of Random Viking of the Week. Yeah, Thompson, Georgia. I should have known it wasn't Thompson, Georgia. This Random Viking of the Week has a twin brother. You're right. You're right. Twin brother. Did twin, I'll ask a question. Did his twin brother play in the National Football League? Um... That's a great question. Crap. I believe so. Yep. Yes. Um, okay, I'll guess again. Hussein Abdullah. Huh. Ooh, ooh, the stakes are high now for Judd. Wow. One more incorrect guess, and Declan gets the point regardless. Yeah, I'm go I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. So Declan, do you want to just kind of chill here and let Judd this is an interesting spot for Declan. We've never here. been here before. I know. Well, just keep going with clues. I mean, De the Declan twin has to the twin brother's do. name rhymes with the random Viking of the week, which I find kind of I don't know. It's kind of funny. This random Viking of the week. I'll give you the list of coaches here. We haven't even gotten a list of coaches yet, besides the old ball coach in college. Brad Childress, Leslie Frazier. Bruce Arians, Tom Coughlin, and Mike Zimmer. So we came Jeff back. Schwartz. Great guess. I have no idea if you were right or not, but that's a great guess. Mm -hmm. I thought. I thought he had a wife that was an Olympic hurdler. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Um, so wait, wait. So Childress, Frazier, Arizona with Arians. The Giants and Mike Zimmer. This random Viking of the week was a fifth round draft pick. This random Viking of the Week played defense. In fact, racked up oh, 316 okay. career tackles, two sacks, and nine forced fumbles in his career. How many sacks? Two. Two. Any picks? Yeah, I had a bunch. Um, hold on. I'll get that for you. I didn't. That wasn't in my notes, so I wasn't sure. All right. But the fact that I'm hesitating on it probably tells you what. No. Probably means he's not a cornerback. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Or exactly. he was, and just. No, wasn't very good at it. Oh, oh, oh. Final guess for me. If I'm wrong, it's over. If Judd's wrong here, this is the first time we've ever, in, in what, almost a year of random yes, Viking this will be the never, first time. We've so never Declan, gotten to this high wire act is, before. This is for the point. Either way, the the stress has never been like this. My palms are sweating. I'm still okay, pissed off about that okay, stupid okay, mock draft. Um, Jasper Brinkley. Oh, Dang. There it is. Jasper and Casper. Casper yeah. Brinkley was a defensive end. And he came back. He was actually a really good guy. There it is. Jasper Brinkley uh, had, I think, well, he That's for sure had one. two stints. He came back to the Vikings you're, for Zimmer in 2014. You're escalating the game. Well, we're kind of out of, we're you're not out of obvious ones, but, well, Jasper played, you know, four years oh, know. with the Vikings. He was a game starter. Is I'm just saying the game is escalating. The stakes are raised here. Random Viking. The unsub week. is 
Raising the stakes. Mm. The FBI must get you. Boy, Dex, you had multiple chances right there. Uh, I I knew it was a linebacker after... I, I like taking swings like that. I got to start doing that more. That was fun. Jasper <laughs> Brinkley either hit you like a freight truck or missed you completely. Yep. I remember. Like, he, yeah. like, that dude hit hard. He was yep. like, he, he basically on Madden was the truck stick. Like, if you connected... He was going to end you, but yeah. if you whiffed, he the guy was right behind him. Yeah, he was kind of a kind of a throwback, right? Like couldn't put him on the field on third down really because he was just Stella, a lean get my forward. Towel. Thick get my towel, back. Stella. Daddy's so. got to wipe the brow off. Hey, tell the audience where they should be hanging out here in a few weeks, Declan. That 3M Open sounds like a pretty. Good That's time. right. Yeah, uh, and more commits to the 3M Open. Got uh, Stuart Sinks coming. Got it, my guy J Day, Jason Day. We I call him J Day. We're tight. Uh, there, there's a lot of good golfers awesome. that are coming uh, to, to the 3M Open, uh, July 18th to the 24th at TPC Twin Cities in Blaine, Minnesota. Uh, you can get your tickets 3mopen.com/tickets. Kids 15 and under get in free with a paid adult ticket. 3mopen.com going to be a blast. There's plenty of uh, former major winners that will be there just in uh, about a couple weeks here. So July 18th to 24th, 3mopen.com/tickets. All right, boys, that's a wrap on today's State of the Vikings offense edition of Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. We'll see you tomorrow.